When you look at the various religions of the world outside of Christianity, what do you find? You find that men have put together a belief system, various documents. If you're Buddhist, there's various Buddhist writings. If you're Hindu, there's various Hindu writings. If you're Muslim, there's the Quran. And the devil would have you believe that Christianity is just kind of the same. You know, and, and here's the writings for Christianity. And it's just kind of the same. It's just that our writings are true, those ones aren't. Now, if you stop and think about, you know, if men, men, are going to create a religious system, how are they going to do that? How are they going to create this system? and get people to follow it. That's what they're going to do. They're going to write out what the belief system should be, put it in print, very similar to something like the Declaration of Independence. Here's what America should be. Here's what this religion should be. Friends, God did way better than that. Way better than that. In your New Testament there, there's various, there's various books, book of Hebrews, letters from Paul, words of Jesus in red, in the Gospels, and there's great value in that. We have to ask ourselves what the value is and what purpose the servants of Jesus had when they wrote down these things. Did they write them down so they could be put in a collection, one single book, so that there would be a basis for an, a new religion? They wrote those things down to testify, to testify about Jesus. And the problem is, the problem is that men get people to think this is the full revelation of God. This is God's final word, full and complete. This is all God had to say. See, if you, wanted to, if you want to find out what God had to say, you have to come here. And this is the end of the matter. This is all God had to say, beginning to end. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Matthew had a testimony to write. The sayings of Jesus. Paul had to write letters to, you know, deal with problems in, in various congregations. And in that, Paul, you know, will try to straighten these guys out and, and, and through that testify about what, you know, real discipleship is all about. And there's value in reading those things. But we, ourselves, are supposed to be a witness of Jesus. False teachers want to take that away from you, that responsibility to be a witness of Jesus and just get you to kind of think this is the final witness, the full and final witness. Give you, you'll give lip service to saying we're witnesses of Jesus, but you really just think everything God had to say, he said it here. See what I'm getting at? And God finished saying this stuff about, you know, 70-ish or 80-ish, maybe 90, AD, somewhere in there. And that's the end of the matter. 
It wasn't the end of the matter. If you desire to follow Jesus, it's way better than that. Way more than that. And that's a deception. The devil wants you to think that if he gets you to think this is the whole deal, you know, the contents of this knowledge, then it's kind of taken away off your shoulders, isn't it, to be a witness of Jesus. For you to be a witness of Jesus, because this is the witness of Jesus, this thing. Right? The devil makes war against the children of God. And his main tool is deception. That's how he robs people. He gets them thinking wrong thoughts so they go down the wrong path. And he does not want you the thing the devil does not want you to do is to be a witness of Jesus Christ. That is the bottom line. He does not want you to be that. And if he can get you to think it's just this, this is the full testimony of God, the full testimony of Jesus, all of it, then you aren't it, are you? You aren't it. And all you have to do is take in the knowledge of this stuff for yourself, very selfishly. We're called to pick up our cross and be a witness of Jesus Christ to others by carrying our cross and loving others. The Hebrews writer talks about, you know, Jesus going to the cross and the joy he set before him. Joy in being tortured on a cross. It's, it's the joy of loving others and doing the will of God in the face of any trial. Any trial. And it's because we don't need to fear death. No fear of death. I mean, when that time comes, it's going to be tough. It was tough for Jesus. Look at him in Gethsemane. It was tough. No one's saying it's not difficult. But ultimately, we really don't need to fear death. We have resurrection life. We have the promise of resurrection life abiding us, the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Father. The witness, the witness of Jesus didn't end with the Apostles. The testimony of God didn't end with the Apostles. It's here today in the servants of Jesus. And, and the value, you know, in these various books in your New Testament is that we can see some of the first witnesses of Jesus. And in the Gospels, What's really good is that these first witnesses of Jesus actually heard him speak certain words. And they put them down. Valuable stuff. Good stuff to have. But again, it's when you start to think this is the final and full revelation of God. That's a problem because it starts to get you to think that you aren't a word of God, that you aren't a testimony of Jesus Christ. And that's what you're to be. And all that you say and all that you do, it didn't end in the first century. God's witness, God's testimony of himself Jesus' testimony of himself didn't end with some writings in the first century. Men testified to Jesus by writing some things down, but they did it in other ways too. 
by the way they lived their life, by the gospel they preached and never wrote down. This is just some of the testimony. Some of it. Of the testimony of the servants of the Lord in the New Testament. And the Lord calls each one of us to go out and be a testimony, a witness, to be a light of the world. Shall manner get me to think this alone is a light of the world? This thing alone. No, it's you. It's you. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the light of the world. One way they did that, just one way, is they wrote some stuff down for other people to see. But it didn't end there. It didn't stop. There's been disciples all through the centuries. And they have been a witness. They have been a light of the world. Because they're led by the Spirit of the living God. Each one of them. Don't be deceived, you know, by the idea that just because this is good, it's a good thing to have, that it can't be used for evil purposes. Remember in the wilderness how the devil tried to use scripture against Jesus for evil purposes? Yeah. Good things. The devil takes good things and attempts to use it for evil. And the way he's doing it with this book is getting you to think this is the final and full revelation of God. If you want to hear from God, you got to hear and read what this says, and that's the end of it. And this is how you hear from God. This is the final revelation of God. It's the whole deal. That's not true. The final revelation of God really is His Son, Jesus, who lives in our hearts. That's the full light of God, the full revelation of God, Jesus who dwells in us. The men who testify in this book tell you that. They tell you that. God has way more for us than what men are leading you to believe. Way more. Way more. The Holy Spirit is about God's power. Power. God's authority. Have you ever heard the phrase, in Jesus' name? You know, people baptize in Jesus' name, you see in the book of Acts. What do you think that means? It's referring to the authority that his servants are doing things. Servants are doing things under the authority of their Lord. In the name of Jesus, we baptize you in this authority. That's what it means. And the way Jesus authorizes them is by sending them out by his spirit. And they send, or he sends them out to be testimonies of he himself. He himself. They are God-breathed. They're inspired. Inspired men. God-breathed men. All of them. Every disciple that's born again is God-breathed. Inspired men. Testifying of Jesus Christ. The main way they do that is to fellowship in his sufferings. That's what it looks like. Because that's what it looked like for Jesus. When you read in Revelation, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, stuff like that. They did not love their lives even unto death. 
What's the word of their testimony in, in language like that? What does it mean? It means that they themselves, in what they do, in what they say, and how they respond to the Lord and His call and His leading, they are a word. They themselves, in what they do. God doesn't just do things like men. You know, write stuff down. Okay, follow this. This is our religion. Do that. God does way better than that. Way better than that. And this is how the Bible deception works. The devil's getting people to believe. It's all about, you know, interpreting this right and just doing what this says. And, you know, there's no more than this to know. This is all of it. When there's no basis for that idea at all. In fact, what's in here tells you different. You're to be a word of God. You yourself. A word of Christ. More specifically. As Paul said, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. We're to be a light to the world. And that is the revelation of God to the world. God revealing himself through his word, Jesus, to us in our hearts. And that spirit leading us and guiding us to reflect that light out into the world so people can see that and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the main deal. That's the main deal. Picking up our cross and following after him. Don't believe the lies. The Lord has much more, much more for us than the false teachers would have you believe. Just pray about that very carefully. God bless you.